Everybody, thank you so much for joining me. This is Parker from Test Prep Champions, and I'm going to be doing another problem of the day right now. This has to do with probabilities. The question is, John has entered into a contest in which a marble will be drawn from a jar with 100 marbles total. If John correctly guesses the color of the marble before it's drawn, he will win a prize. If the jar has 10 blue marbles, 15 green marbles, 30 yellow, and 45 red marbles, which color should John guess to give him the best chance of winning? Go ahead, pause the video, please try this out on your own first, and then we'll go over it. Okay, hopefully you had a chance to look at this, but if not, that's fine too. We'll go over it. So there's two ways to do this. The first is to use an intuitive or common sense type approach and to just reason your way through it and, and imagine that you're John and you're going into a contest where you've got to guess which color marble will be drawn and you could say, well, there's 45 red marbles and there's only 10 blue, 15 green, and there's only 30 yellow, so since the most red marbles are in the jar, I'll guess red. So if you used a logical approach or common sense intuitive way to do it, that's perfectly valid. And so congratulations for that. If you've got red, that is the answer. I'm going to spoil that for everybody right now. But the point of this question, though, is to use the probability formula to do the calculations. So you're definitely going to want to know how to do that, even if you use the more intuitive way to answer this. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. And this can come up on the GED test, depending on which version of the test you get. You may get a probability question or a couple. And so it's definitely worth knowing how to do it. It's not really that hard. So first of all, let me give some definitions here. So this is the formula of for the probability. And there's different ways to write it. This way is fairly easy to understand. It's the probability of an outcome equals the number of favorable outcomes divided by the total number of outcomes. And I'm going to show you how to apply this in just a minute. And so here's my definition of probability. So probability is just how likely an event is to happen. Okay, probability, it's just how likely something is to happen. And so that's the definition of probability. So if you want to put that down in your notes, I'll give you a second to do that. Maybe pause the video. Okay, hopefully you got that down in your notes if you want to write it down. So I'm going to clear that definition out so we have some room to work on the question now. So let's calculate the probability for each marble just as good practice and also note that you can confirm that your answer is correct this way. So the probability of an outcome occurring is equal to the number of favorable outcomes divided by the total number of outcomes. So let's look first at blue. So if the jar has 10 blue marbles, what's the probability of getting a blue marble? So I'm going to write this, let's say P, and I'm going to put blue, I'm going to put a B in parentheses for blue. So when you see me writing P of blue, that just means the probability of blue. So I'm just abbreviating rather than writing blue out. So the probability of drawing a blue marble is going to be equal to the total number of favorable outcomes divided by the total number of outcomes. So what's the total number of favorable outcomes? What does that mean here? Well, all that means is what's the number of chances you, or what's the number of chances you have to draw blue marble? Well, since there's 10 marbles in there, okay, the number of favorable outcomes for drawing a blue marble is 10. And the total number of outcomes would be 100 because there's 100 marbles total. So we would do 10 divided by 100. And you can simplify this. Let's see, we can cancel a zero out of the top and we've got one divided by 10 which that's equal to 0.1. So the probability of drawing a blue marble is going to be 0.1. And we can express this as a fraction here. So I, I expressed it as 1 over 10, or we can express it as a percent, or we can express it as a decimal. So here we'll leave that as 0.1. And you know what, if we want to write that as a percent, we can. That is just going to be 10%. Okay, so there's three ways you can write it as a, you can write a probability. So now let's go on, let's do the probability of drawing a green marble. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write P of G, and I'm abbreviating it. The G just means green marble, so I don't have to write that out, and P just tells me that I'm calculating the probability. So the probability of drawing a green marble is equal to the number of green marbles divided by the total number of marbles that you can draw. So there's 15 green marbles. So we've got 15, and there's 100 marbles total here. So let's see, how could we simplify this? Well, the easiest way to do it is to just use a calculator, of course. And if you used a calculator, you could just do 15 divided by 100. But let me, let me simplify this down a little bit. So what you could do to simplify the fraction, you divide 5 out of the top number and 5 out of the bottom number. 
5 divided by, or 15 divided by 5, I should say, is going to be 3, and 100 divided by 5 is going to be 20. So you could write it as a fraction as 3 over 20, or you could write it as a decimal. And to do that, you would just put 3 divided by 20 in your calculator, and that's going to give you 0.15. And then to write that as a percent, you would just say, well, 0.15, that's 15%. Okay, so three different ways to write that probability. So we've got green out of the way now. Let's move on to yellow. So we've got 30 yellow marbles. So what's the probability of drawing a yellow marble? So again, I'm just going to abbreviate this as P of Y, meaning the probability of yellow, but I'm not going to write yellow out to save time. So Hopefully you're starting to get the pattern here, but the way that you would do this is you'd say, what's the number of favorable outcomes? Meaning in this case, what's the number of outcomes of drawing a yellow marble? Well, since there's 30 yellow marbles, you've got 30 chances to pull a yellow marble out. Out of 100 different marbles that are in the jar, so the total number of outcomes is 100. You've got 30 divided by 100, and again, we can take a zero off of both of these we would, could express the probability as a fraction as 3 over 10, or we could express it as a decimal as just 0.3, or we can express it as a percent as 30%. It just depends, oops, 30%. It just depends how you want to write it. And so then the last thing here that we want to do is let's calculate the probability of drawing a red marble. So let me write that down here. So I'm, again, I'm going to write P of R, meaning probability of red. I'm just going to abbreviate. So the probability of drawing a red marble is going to be equal to the number of chances of drawing a red marble, which is 45, because there's 45 red marbles. So the number of favorable outcomes divided by the total number of outcomes, which we know is 100. Okay, and so here, to express this as a fraction, what I would do is I'd divide both the top number and the bottom number by 5. 45 divided by 5 is 9, and 100 divided by 5 is 20, so we've got 9 over 20. So 9 twentieths is our fraction. Now, if we want to put this into a decimal form, you would just push 9 divided by 20 in your calculator, and you get 0.45. And as always, to make this 8%, you would just make it 45%. So however you want to write it as a fraction, as a decimal, or as a percent. But just note that if you get something like this, and I'm just going to draw a box here because I'm just illustrating a point, and converting percents in decimals and going back and forth, that's a whole different topic. I might make a video about that if you guys would like me to. But just note that if you have something like this, like if you have 0.05, Okay, that's not equal to, that's not 50%, that's equal to 5%. So 0 0.05 is equal to 5%. All right, but if you have 0 0.5, 0 0.5, that would be equal to 50%. And that's just an example to just so that if you are going between um, the decimal form and the percent form, just understand that if you've got this decimal, then a zero, then the number, that's going to be like 5%, or if it's 0 0.03, that'd be 3%. If it's 0 0.02, that'd be 2%, et etc. et cetera. And if it's just 0.5, it's 50%, or 0.3, that's going to be 30%, et etc. et cetera. And if you want, let me know. I'll make a video, problem of the day, where we do some of those conversions or a longer video. Um, but so here, the point is now that we've calculated these probabilities, we can see which one would be the best to bet on. So you've got a 10% chance of drawing a blue marble, 15% chance of drawing a green marble, and a 30% chance of drawing a yellow marble. 45% chance of drawing a red marble. So since you've got the highest chance or the highest probability of drawing a red marble, the answer is obviously going to be red. Okay, and so one other thing here that we can notice is that when we've got these fractions here, right, so we've got, let's say, when we express them all as over 100, right, so we had 10 over 100, 15 over 100, 30 over 100, 45 over 100, we note that the the, new, the numerator is directly proportional to the probability. Okay, so when the denominator is the same, the probability is going that you get is going to be directly proportional to your numerator. So what I mean by that is if we do 10 divided by 100, okay, we already know that in a decimal that's 0.1, and if you've got 45 over 100, okay, we already know that as a decimal that's going to be equal to 0.45. So Here's what I mean by that. So the numerator of a fraction is the top number, and the denominator is the bottom number. So you definitely need to know, need to know that for the GED. So if you've got, 
when you've got the same denominators, all right, and neither of these are in simplest form, but I'm just leaving them like this just to illustrate the point, that when you've got the same denominator, okay, the numerators are going to be directly proportional to the percent that you get. So you can just compare the probabilities. You don't even have to do the calculation. You can just say, I've got 10 over 100 and 45 over 100. Okay, so the denominators are the same, so I can just look at the numerator and see which is going to be a bigger probability. Since 45 is bigger than 10, I can say, well, 0.45 is bigger is going to be bigger than 0.1, right? And so, for example, this should be common sense, but let me just point this out. So, like, if you've got, let's see, let's do one that we didn't do here. So, here's a quick bonus. So, let's say you've got, like, 36 divided by 100, and you're comparing that to, say, 35 divided by 100, which is a bigger fraction. 36 over 100 or 35 over 100, which is going to be a bigger fraction, uh, or which is which is a bigger fraction, which is going to be a bigger percent. Well, hopefully you see that it's it's going to be the 36 over 100. Why? Well, the denominators of both of these fractions are the same. So if you look at the numerator, you can tell which one's bigger. Because 36 divided by 100, let me do that as a decimal, 36 divided by 100, plug that in your calculator, you see that that's equal to 0.36, and 35 over 100 is equal to... 0.35 and so 0.36 is bigger than 0.35 and so the point here is that the numerator is directly proportional to point to the percent that you get when the denominators are equal okay and even when they're not equal but I don't want to confuse you guys up here um, but if you looked at this initially and you just intuitively said well 45 is bigger than 10 15 and 30 then you use this is kind of what you did without maybe putting it in these mathematical words but I don't want to confuse you guys um, but hopefully the point here is to illustrate how to do these probability complications. And I broke this down, analyzed it in a couple different ways. So hopefully you picked up some other math tricks and other math knowledge from this that will be useful for the GED test. So if you like this video, please subscribe. I do these problem of the day videos every day, so you won't want to miss those. If you want to test yourself for the GED test, the great way to do it is to just take these problem of the day videos and just play them all. And you can put them on double speed if you want. Just go through the playlist and try each question. If you get stuck, just put it on double speed and watch my answer. I try to keep these videos pretty short so it won't take you that long and that's a good way to test where you're at and see which concepts you need extra work on um, but please subscribe and you won't miss anything and also give this video a like I'd appreciate it it would help me know if I'm on the right track with these videos if these are helpful for you so I can know how to keep doing a better job of helping you so if this problem comes out of my book the GED math champions guide my free 50 problem version you'll get the 50 problems and you'll get solutions this problems in there as well as a written solution so I'll put a link down below where you can grab that um, but that's where this problem comes I made this problem up out of that book and so good luck with your studying guys thanks for watching this is Parker from Desperate Champions